Fury is an adrenaline-fueled boss rush game that's all about trial and error. Think the combat of Metal Gear Rising as a top-down twin-stick shooter. The game has been available for the Xbox One and PS4 before, but now it makes its way over to the Nintendo Switch. Let's see if it's worth checking out. Fury has you play as a prisoner who, as far as we know, has been trapped in this prison in space for years being tortured. One day, a man known as The Voice, who's dressed in a rabbit outfit, frees you and encourages you to escape said prison, defeating the guard that's been torturing you endlessly. After your first boss fight, your task is to escape this prison world which means visiting the 10 islands surrounding the prison, each with their own guardian and boss fight. While the game does primarily focus on being a tough and challenging boss rush game, it still contains a moderately deep story despite it being so focused on boss battles. It's a story of mystery and revelations that can lead you down multiple endings towards the later half of the game. Small story elements are given to the player through brief pieces of dialogue spoken by the voice and the bosses during their boss fights. It's not the most brilliant story, but it's definitely more than what I was expecting from a hack and slash game like this. Like I originally stated, this is a boss-centric game, very much like something you'd expect from Cuphead. In total, there's about 10 bosses, which sounds like a little bit until you realize how brutal these bosses are. Even at the start of the game, it can be a bit of a challenge as you make your way through the first boss slash the tutorial of the game. The prisoner is equipped with a gun cannon and sword. You have the ability to attack with each of these weapons, which also have a charge variation attack for more damage at the cost of time. Aside from the offense though, you can parry your attacks for a counter. These moments are indicated when a boss flashes a little brief flare, which tells the player to get ready for a counter. It's not that easy though, as while it may indicate it's time for a parry, it doesn't always mean press it right away. It can be a second or two seconds away. All coming back to that trial and error gameplay. It's highly unlikely you'll beat a boss in the first try, and that's just all part of the process. Along with the parry is a dodge move that's more like a teleport move. With all these tools at your disposal, you'll be thrown into close quarter environments to fight these bosses that get progressively more difficult with each one you face. None of these bosses are alike either, each unique with their own little quirk that you have to learn to defeat with your abilities through constant death. At the top of the screen is a health meter for both you and the boss, and for the most part it works like any other health meter would in a game. You see your main health in the larger rectangle, and then the stocks of health in the smaller squares, almost like a fighting game. The twist in the health system is that when you lose a stock of your health, the round of said boss fight restarts. Likewise, each one of those little stocks for the boss is like a new round for a boss fight. It's a good way to gauge when a new attack pattern may come from the boss. This system took a bit to get used to, and it could be frustrating at times because if you're so close to ending a new stock, and then you lose your own stock, it means you have to restart said boss fight. And when you lose all of your stocks, then you have to restart the match from the beginning, there's no checkpoints. So like I said from the get-go, this is a challenging and brutal game. It's fair at all times, but it can also be a little bit frustrating, especially for those of you with little patience. Now there's a total of three difficulties, a hard, normal, and easy mode. I went ahead and played my first playthrough in the normal difficulty. At any point in the game, you can change the difficulty of the game, but if you lower it, then it's permanently set. My first playthrough took about 10 hours to complete, and a lot of it was just learning how to handle the attack patterns for each of the characters, learning when the right time to parry was and how to avoid certain attacks. It was a gruesome, brutal, and oddly enough, very rewarding experience. Once I had beaten the game, I felt like I was ready for a second round. I had mastered each of the bosses to the best of my abilities, and though it still may be difficult at times, I was ready to face them once again. The second playthrough took about 3 hours, and I was even greeted with a new ending based on the new decision I made towards the later half of the game. It was a pleasant surprise. While playing the game though, it did feel a bit weird to have everything unlocked from the get-go. You don't unlock new powers as you progress through bosses, instead it's all about perfecting the skills you start off with. I can definitely see that coming off as boring to some, but it also has a sense of accomplishment when you finally defeat a boss that you've been stuck on for so long. Fury is a very cinematic looking game. That was the first impression I got when I started playing this game. In general, the game's very out of this world setting provides some vibrant and colorful backgrounds. The cinematic aesthetic comes from its use of wide and close-up camera angles. A lot of the time when you are walking between bosses, you get these fixed shots that give a very film-like vibe to the game. Scenes where you're in complete control of the character, yet are put in these oddly positioned camera angles. It looks really cool, but it can also completely throw you off when you're trying to control the character in an oddly positioned camera angle. On console, the game targets 60fps on all platforms, though it definitely has the occasional drop on all of them too. Luckily, it's not bad enough to ruin the gameplay. 
As for resolution, on PS4 the game runs at 1080p and I think a slightly lower resolution on the Xbox One. While on the Nintendo Switch it goes at 720p in dock mode and 540p in handheld mode. It's definitely a significant softer picture on the Switch when you just look at the numbers, but luckily it's not as noticeable and that's mostly just in thanks to the simplified nature of the visuals. Everything is mostly still a solid color so things look pretty good even at the lower resolution. Fury has some killer tracks for its boss fights. Each track is funky in its techno vibes and luckily you can find the entire soundtrack on Spotify. I also really like that each of the tracks were neatly placed at the bottom right of the screen whenever you pause the boss fight. If you skip out on this game for whatever reason, at least look up the soundtrack on Spotify because it's pretty stellar. If you do end up playing this game on the Switch, there is support for HD Rumble for the subtlest of reactions for moments when you get knocked down or have a heavy hit. It's not the best use of HD Rumble, but it is appreciated. Fury is a very challenging boss rush hack and slash game. It's a game that will have you dying constantly before you finally get through that one boss that's been keeping you from progressing, only to realize that the same thing is going to happen with the next boss. That trial and error process will be brutal and at times frustrating depending on the patience of the player. For me, it was always a challenge for sure, but it felt fair and satisfying while I was fighting the boss and when I finally overcame the obstacle, giving me a hard time. If you're one for challenging games like Cuphead, Fury is completely up your alley with great music and combat. However, if you're easily frustrated by these types of games, I'd stay away, even at the easy difficulty setting because at that point, the rewarding feeling of the gameplay just sort of dwindles down over time. That does it for my review of Fury for the Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, PS4, and PC. If you have any questions about the game that I may have missed in this review, feel free to ask me in the comment section down below or just hit me up on Twitter or Snapchat. If there are any games coming out in the future that you want reviewed, let me know ahead of time in the comment section down below as well. Thank you all very much for watching, hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you all in the next one.